Hi, I'm Zatheris Gaming, and this is a no-death guide to the fourth level of Sifu, the tower. So this level here is one of the first levels that is a little bit more on the challenging side as far as getting to the boss in the first place. Um, like the third level, you can literally kill two enemies and you're there. Um, the, the it just This one has a much longer lead up to the boss. So in, in the entry here, you're going to take the elevator on the right. Don't take the one on the left. The one on the left takes you through the whole level. The one on the right is the shortcut to the lead up to the front to the boss. Um, when you come off the elevator, you're going to have to go through the path. Hopefully, you're familiar with it. Um, but these enemies, I, they can be a pain. I've died a number of times in this sequence. Um, this is a no-death, so I do have a no-death video up of this. Um, but if you're just going for the under-25 age run for the trophy, um, don't be afraid to just have one or two deaths in this level. And then you... you just have to be a little bit more careful in the final boss in the in the third in the final level um, but it's up to you i don't punish yourself to try to keep it as low as possible on this level you only have one more after this um to do the full no death um or to do the under 25 but with these fights the biggest thing on the this first one this first one's a little bit easier um they keep them keep them separated as much as possible um, a lot of the same tricks and techniques from the second level and the first level are going to pay off here as well. Um, using weapons to your advantage, always try to grab weapons and move on to the next fight with a weapon. A lot of the strategies that you've heard me say through the first three videos, if you haven't checked those out, I have no death guides for the first one, two, three videos, where I talk a little bit more about the parry system, avoiding, phasing, all those sorts of techniques. Um, so if you hear me say any of those and you're confused about what those techniques are, you can check out those other videos for content. So this first little mini boss here, um, she does a lot of kicks. So if, you, if you're familiar with this enemy, she's, she's in the game pretty frequent. Um, I try to punish with the, the, um, the leg sweeps and, and using my sword here to do as much damage as possible. She has a lot of moves where you can just down avoid and she'll kick over you. The problem is she does a low, low kick where she'll do a high, high kick, and then sometimes she'll sweep at your feet. And if she sweeps at your feet, you have to be ready to jump over that or just block it. Um, if you block it, you're going to take a huge um, hit to your uh, poise and probably end up getting knocked to the ground. Um, but most of her kicks, uh, you can always just down avoid or sidestep out of. Um, if you get punished, like right there, like I just took a ton of damage, um, she will rip you apart. The benefit with this is don't worry about how low your health is because there's a shrine in this room. So if you can get through this fight without dying, you're set because there's a shrine there that's going to put you right back to full health um, and then you can move on with the fight and you're good to go. Um, so fortunately, I was able to take her down. Be very careful in this room too because she will sometimes launch over the table. You can't just like hide from her. Um, here I take the, the weapon proficiency, so weapon doing more damage to stance. I had enough XP. If you don't, this is at this point in the game, you can kind of feel free to, to go your own way with the shrines. But weapon proficiency is the one I use because I use weapons in boss fights a lot. Um, and so damaging bosses with the weapons to do damage to their stance structure is going to really help on this boss and more importantly, the final boss. So this is the room where most I struggle the most. I, 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 I know a couple other people have. Um, after you kill these first three enemies, um, as you actually kill them more spawn, but it's after these first three, you get a big... One of the bigger beefy guys, a a less health version of the mini boss that you just killed, um, and then a dude with a dagger. Uh, the dude with the dagger is pretty easy to take out, just pretty standard enemy with the sword. But this big guy here that's punching me, along with the the sort of agileness of the kicks, is really annoying. Um, it's really hard to sort of balance that. The easiest way I found is to kind of maneuver around the room. I got a little lucky that she was she kicked him in the back of the head and killed him. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. But uh, she, yeah, she's just, she killed the guy. So they will damage each other if you kind of group them up, but don't rely on that as a strategy. Um, normally what I would do here is I would try to isolate out the dude with the sword and kill him first, take his, take his weapon. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you're comfortable having a couple more enemies up, um, focus on the, her first, the girl that does the leg sweep. She's usually the hardest cause she's so fast. Um, at least she's the hardest for me. And then kill the enemies around her as you're taking her out so that you get your health back from just doing the typical health takedowns. 
Um, it's up to you, your approach, but generally it's kind of just going to be, you got to just power through that fight, weave through the, the area there as best you can. And then you have this, this fight. I don't, the, the fights with the people with the staffs, I don't tend to struggle with. Um, she, a lot of the, the staff dodging is actually quite easy. You just down, 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 down. Same as the second boss. Again, if you need the video for that, I have that up. Um, but you just do your down flick avoids. Um, and the only time, I think she'll do one leg sweep. Um, but generally speaking, it's always air, like to, at your head swipes. And you can just punish her every single time. Um, so she comes in, she does her attacks. You can avoid or block or however you want to do it. Generally, I would just avoid them. I'm failing here, but um, do your avoids and then just, just kick. If you, you can also drag them up the stairs, drag her back up those stairs and then throw uh, and do some damage there if they fall. So grab a fresh staff, and super important here, grab a fresh staff before you leave this room. So um, that's the two sort of mini bosses of the, of the game. She's not so hard, I don't think. Um, if you struggle with her, you can also leg sweep her if you're more comfortable with her not having a staff. I'm more comfortable not doing the leg sweep and making her drop her weapon because I find her uh, move set when she's wielding the the staff much much easier to deal with. Um, so you can have two enemies drop here. Just be careful. Make sure you don't fall off the ledge. Um, take them out as quickly as you can. Uh, sorry for the awkward camera here. Obviously, this is um, a little bit of a <laughs> awkward camera angle area. I mean, the game in general sometimes the camera angles can be a little bit a little bit rough. Um, this is the last enemy. Again, super super quick to take out. And then you gotta get one final shrine. And I believe at this shrine I also take weapon proficiency. Uh, we'll check here when we get to the shrine. So we just drop down, grab the shrine. The shrine will put you back at full health right before the boss fight. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I grab weapon proficiency again. Improve weapon damage and impact on opponent structure. Oh, do I... Oh, I went with weapon durability. I wanted the weapon for longer. So you can do either or here. Again, it's kind of up to you how you want to go. Um, so, quick thing to note for this fight is during this fight, right off the bat here, you look at my feet. I'm going to walk back. There's a weapon. You drop your weapon as soon as you enter the room. Don't pick it up for phase one. If you're struggling on phase one, by all means, grab it. But I would highly recommend leaving it there and then grabbing it right before the transition to phase two so that you can have it for the full weapon durability available to you to, to impact and do as much damage as possible in the second phase. So in this fight, we're gonna slow it down here. You're gonna dodge down, avoid avoid down, and then, and then up. So it's down twice and then jump over the swing. Almost all of her attacks are down twice and then up as she goes for your feet. So it's again here down and I miss it. So it's out, down, down, and then up to jump over that and then you can move in and punish. It's a lot slower than the boss in the third third fight, um, so or the third uh, level. So you can usually punish it pretty well um, and just use your avoids. Um, the pattern is, again, you dodge down, you dodge down, and then you dodge up. I'm failing really bad in phase one here, but it's also just kind of to showcase. This boss, even if you're, even if you're struggling, you can really punish her um, she's she doesn't have a whole lot of health like her stance goes away really quick as you can see I'm I, I because of how low my health got I was like you know what screw it I'm just gonna pick up the staff and take it into the next phase and so I start punishing her here with the staff um, she makes me drop it <laughs> uh, my health is so low so I get the leg sweep off use all those the, those tools in your, at your that's at your disposal when she does that little spin i do it sl I, sl I slow it down in phase two to kind of show it a little bit better she'll do a spin where she just punches you in the chest um she'll spin and punch in your chest um you can always just avoid that and then immediately punish it right away moving into phase two here so during phase two if, if you have your weapon she's still going to use a lot of the same moves so she's got that combo down down up where you jump over at the end um, where she does the leg sweep. She has a couple extra moves here. A lot of them are the same where you just dodge to avoid down, um, do your phasing down. She has one move that hits me every single time. I do slow it down here, so we'll talk about it at that point. But again, she just keeps throwing out the, that uh, that weighted part of the chain and it it's at your chest constantly and at, at, then at your leg. So down, down, up. So here, she, when she punches you in the chest, 
She That's the first dodge down. That's the first one. And then she's going to swing at your head. So she kind of does like a, she comes in on her knees, hits you in the chest, goes at your head, and then immediately goes at your feet. So it's down, down, and then up, oh, jumping up over the leg sweep. Um, same as everything else, but the first one is, a, is like a punch. So this slow down move, that's the spin move that I was talking about in phase one. Um, when she does that spin, um, always just feel free to, um, when you're watching for it, just avoid down and then immediately, immediately punish that every single time. Because if she doesn't hit it, she gets stuck there in stance, and you can just punish it every single time. Um, I know this fight is happening quite quickly. If you're struggling with any of these, just make sure to, you can slow down the YouTube video. I tried to slow down some of the actual individual action sequences just to showcase some of those moves. But if, if you still have questions as to exactly how I'm doing some of them, don't hesitate to slow down the YouTube video. Obviously, my voice is then going to slow down too. But just rewatch the certain fights that you're struggling with, the certain individual move sets. Um, and it'll help you learn what exactly it is that you're being punished by. Um, the big moves again in this one are she spins and then does a chest chest uh, hit. Um, in that one, always just dodge down, don't uh, don't get hit at it. And it's always either at the she'll do it right at the start of a move after you've punished her, and she's trying to do it to get to create distance. So usually when you're hitting her a bunch, um, she'll block and parry, and then it, she'll try to do that to create distance. Um, so that's usually when that one will come out. Sometimes she'll do it at the end of a combo, but it's really rare. Um, the bigger one is she'll kneel. She kind of gets down on one knee. And again, I've slowed it down earlier in the video. She gets down on that one knee. She hits you in the chest. And then she spins the, the um, weighted chain at the top of your head and then at your feet. That one, as you saw in the video, I got punished by the leg sweep every single time. Because in my head, I kept waiting for a second aerial aerial hit but the first hit that you're dodging is that chest so it's hit to the chest with a punch swing and then she swings at your legs um so hopefully that's helpful that's the end of the fight um if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments would love to hear from you guys um it, i also run a discord uh for my community you can hit me up over there link to that is in the description um i also am a live streamer so i stream over on twitch three days a week uh, my schedule is a little bit all over the place, but generally it's 5.30 Mountain Standard Time. Hit me up on Twitch and Discord for the actual schedule, but otherwise just you can follow me there and see when I go live. Um, and then of course, yeah, subscriptions and likes, super, super helpful. I'm a new channel, so if you don't mind tossing me a like if you like the video, um, that'd be super, super helpful and supportive. Uh, but yeah, I'll have the fifth video up for this very soon. Thank you very much for watching, and if you're a trophy hunter, happy hunting and good luck with that uh, uh, under 25 age trophy. Hopefully this is helping you out get it. Happy hunting.